What's going on, my boys? Welcome back to another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Dank Links. And because your boy is in a rush this morning, I have to just give you boys the swiftiest of replays. I don't got time to get into the dankest of jewels. But let's talk about this new deck, or not new deck, these modifications that I've made. So I want to tell you guys right now that this deck for me has been upgraded to the level of main deck who won. Now, what does that mean to have a main deck one? That means that if your soul is on the line and you had to defeat the forces of darkness, some boy tried to show up to take your rarest card or try to seal you away in the Ori Calcos. Your grandpa got his soul stolen by a crazy, uh, crazy man who stole it from a videotape. You would whip out your main deck one to duel for his soul to take him down. And that's what this deck is, boy. It's my avatar. Overdrive teleporter, my boy. However, this deck is going at least two banana. It's like at least two banana right now in the ranks right now. Uh, it would be three if I could just get an overdrive teleporter. I just want to tell you guys, I uploaded the first video of like the true psychic build of what I was working towards five days ago. It has been five days and this man has yet to provide to me an overdrive teleporter, a third one. I just need a third one. This man, I don't know what's up. Everybody in their mom is getting three, but I'm the only dude that, that loves them truly. And it cannot get three. But let's talk about the new cards that I put in here. Um, some cards that I might potentially be taking out. Um, just taking a look at this deck. You know, the deck list that I have on the left is the same picture as this deck. Um, this card here is a brand new card, Life Force Harmonizer. Now, I might end up taking Life Force Harmonizer out. I haven't used him yet. And he's been in the deck for at least four or five duels. And I just have never drawn him never had occasion to use him he's just been there so i don't know if i'm going to keep him in or not but we'll see like if i ever draw him like like you know will i actually be able to use him to win a game um also because i don't have my third overdrive at the moment i'm working with a psychic emperor and the reason why i use psychic emperor instead of stormcaller is because even though stormcaller is great i feel like outside of destiny draw combo stormcaller isn't all that good because of his secondary effect to make you take 2300 damage when he dies so i put in psychic emperor because you get 500 points for each psychic monster in the grave and even though i am running one reinforced human psychic borg i feel like the psychic emperor does not clash hard and he will come in and give me at least a thousand points because you know there's normally two psychics in the grave by the time i get out a tribute monster uh the one monster i tributed and something that died in a previous turn um i've also upped the ante on destructron and lowered my reinforcement reinforced psychic board to one um psychic board is great just not in the beginning of the game so that's why i run one to make sure i see it in the middle or the end because he will close the game so so this is how i built the deck you know so think about it like this if you have two of something or one of something that's a mid to end in game play there's no guarantee you'll have it in the beginning if you do that's great but if you got two or one it's a mid to end game play um which makes cards like this and cards like this very strong um if you run three or something that's going to be a, a early game a early turn or mid mid game i'm sorry early game or mid game play and my early game and mid game play are what psychic fighters and destructrons now destructron is an interesting card because you know you might not use destructron because he is a uh um is a liability he says if he's face up on the field and there's no other psychic monsters um you have to destroy him and you got to pay a thousand life points to destroy back row while it's set um they can still chain it so you know a lot of people might say Ugh, i'm not gonna use this guy 400 defense yeah can't stand up to nothing very true however if this man stays on the field as you will see coming up soon and he is not dealt with he will go to work so um also he's really strong in, com in combination with brain research lab him and any other psychic monster is deadly um and then of course econs are in here and uh we are using three murmur of the force now 
instead of the two cell exchange and one counter cleaner. And the reason for that is, um, is because I'm just trying out a different strategy. Um, I, I use Murmur of the Forest in a lot of different decks, but it's never been something I, I don't, I, I, it's never been a card I think that I've used on this channel. And, uh, one of my boys pointed that out on Twitter and was like, Hey, you should use Murmur of the Forest. And we basically discussed the benefits, but how I see it is, um, in when I started to hit the higher, like, I guess when I'm about to rank up to platinum too, well, I guess not today because today's the last day for ranked, but, um, I'm on my rank up match to platinum too. And on that rank up match, um, it was a Mako, but preceding that I had to play three paradox brothers back to back to back. And even though I had to play them back to back to back, the soul exchange is just a little too slow. Skipping the battle phase is, uh, a little rough. And then, um, these just work better. Um, having, uh, remember the force to put any monster face down is perfect. Uh, and it, it just gives you a lot more versatility. So, but I want to give a special shout out to eliminating the L because this card has been so good. That's why you have to run at least two. Um, if I had three, I might even run three. It's just, it's just an amazing card in this deck. So, but until I get three psychic, un until I get three, the deck will never be complete. It will always be, um, Okay, in my personal opinion. I've, but I, if I want it to be amazing, I need at least three overdrives. Um, but let's just jump into some of these replays. And I'm going to show you guys some dank replays. As you can see, like I said, I'm at Platinum 1 up against the Mai and the Mako, which you guys are going to see both of those duels. Uh, yeah, Mai and Mako. But before that, I'm going to show you guys these three duels. Um, this duel is just a really good duel from yesterday. Um, it's actually a very delicious L like I like I, I was swiftly defeated here, but even though I was defeated It was still a good duel. Um, basically. I lost this game because I was too chicken shit to attack and normally that's that's not my thing I always attack regardless um, But this particular game I really wanted to win because we were kind of having a really strong uh, back and forth exchange but the problem was here as as you as you might see, um, we're both running balance, so we both had a very strong hand of spells, traps, and monsters. So this guy is dumping all stuff in the grave. You don't know what Delta the Magnet Warrior does. If you got three um, level four or lower uh, rock monsters, or basically three or four magnet warriors three magnet warriors in the grave you can banish all three to summon um valkyrian the magna warrior which is absolutely insane i mean that's a powerful effect so i gotta play around it and that's what i'm doing with what what what's like a fighter bouncing stuff to the top of his deck you know making sure he doesn't have the right cards um but the thing is about it while i'm doing that I'm actually not doing all that well uh, because I still got to kill these things, you know, so I'm not banishing them or anything. They're still going to the grave, and he has many powerful cards to combine with that, like Mega Rock Dragon. But at least when he dropped that, I figured that I didn't have to worry about the Valkyrian, at least for now. Um, and here's my counter cleaner, which is another reason why. I, I took it out even though it's, it's good and it helped right there in a the situation You can see down the line how if it was murmur of the forest it would have helped me a lot more So, you know, I'm just killing this monster it's hoping I can get a monster so I can start killing him But I didn't get a monster. I just keep drawing into more and more spells and it's just Driving me insane. It would have been great to get a monster, but a destructron would have been perfect But I didn't get either one and as you can see if this was that murmur, or this was that murmur, or this was that murmur, uh, well, I'm sorry, not that, that's enemy controller. But it would have been great. Um, I was afraid of his back row because I'm thinking that it's definitely um, a mirror wall. So I mystic box to destroy his monster. He econs. But I found out, I'm going to spoil you right now. I found out that that is not um, fucking 
Mirwa. It was actually a windstorm of Ataqua. And if I had just attacked, um, I would have just got windstormed and then I could have econed and then I would have won the exchange of econ um, back and forth cards. I would have I would have won that exchange eventually. Um, like this would have been the winning exchange, I think. Um, or, or something like that. Like I would have still had a card, but but he still had a freaking windstorm. Unless I don't I, I don't really remember what. Yeah, that was symbols of duty. Yeah, symbols of duty, and he couldn't he couldn't summon anything back to stop me because um, if I had a just attack, he the only thing he could assemble to duty back for was either another magnet warrior or a psychic monster, and he couldn't have brought him back. So I would have won that, but I didn't attack, and that's what happens because I was. I read into the mirror wall way too hard. I fell for his ploy hook, line, and shanka because I couldn't afford to take the risk because I only had 200 life. So um, that is definitely something that I had to keep in mind. But I was really, I, I don't know. That, that duel was really good. I, I'm not going to I'm not gonna lie. I'm not going to hold you up. He was a duelist of remarkable skill. So I don't uh, feel bad about that one at all. I only feel bad when I make a mistake. Or if somebody just cheese balls me like like I've been doing. <laughs> um, so Rex, now I know a lot of you boys might be wondering how this deck fares against dinos and their powerful beast. So we sack their souls. That's what we do, boy. We get them right off the goddamn field. Here he is. <laughs> Here he go. Boy, boy, <laughs> boy, boy. So we're going right for the deck lock right off bat. Um, classic combo. Destroy my watch psychic fighter. Draw for turn. The boy Destructron. You gotta have Destructron in, in your first opening hand every game because a Destructron could lead to game just instantly, right off the bat. Um, so now this guy's like, well, I mean, I gotta get rid of these fucking piece of shit beasts. And he summons this blue eyes white dragon killing monster which I'm like yeah okay <laughs> psychic emperor give me 1500 of them things a boy in his board here he is I'm gonna go ahead and banish three I got three I got three um brain counters on my research lab but this boy my research is funded I'm at 5500 the emperor saw fit to give me 1500 life point investment in my research to take you down so Thank you, Psychic like Emperor. <laughs> Could have played Twister in response or something. Who knows? Now, the next one is, this is Taya Deck Out. Um, I thought it was Taya Burn, you know, dual standby. But then I realized a lot of people recently that I've been coming up against, especially in this platinum level, um, are just running dual standby with something else. Because I guess they think that you're going to be like, oh, man, it's burn. I'm going to set every card. I never set every card in the back row. I only set two in the back row. Never, ever set every card in the back row. Um, I'll just take that additional 200 damage. Because if it's Taya burn, it's fucking Taya burn, right? You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to do what I can to make sure I win. But I'm not going to set three cards in the back row and then get fucking rolled. Because somebody is not playing Taya burn and they set a straight flush. I'm not doing that. I refuse. So she says three in the back, but you know what I got face down, boy. Now the funny thing about this is Destructron. I do get a lot of set flip into Destructron, blow up the full back row plays. I get a lot of those plays, but um, this guy's playing conscription. I'm guessing his whole idea is like, oh well, if I conscript him and I take a monster, I can defend myself. But the reason why conscription is stupid because Especially in this game, um, even if you're playing deck out, it's just a dumb card. It's first off, it's a one for one. So you one, well, it's a minus one for you, but it's a. If you're talking about in, in terms of cards being destroyed, it's a one for one. You take one card from top of the deck, and either summon it to your side of the field, which is decent, or I get to draw, so, <laughs> which is horrible. But the funny thing is about that card in general. Is that when you're playing against psychic monsters, as you saw, when it hits overdrive, you can't get overdrive because overdrive cannot be special summoned. So it's like, you know, 
it, it, it's just, I don't know. I just really hate that card. It's a stupid card. It's right up there with Sword of Deep Seated. It's like one of those cards that people use because the effect is cute, but it's a terrible card. <laughs> but if you use it and get somebody Blue Eyes White Dragon, I can understand why you like it. <laughs> uh, you know, I ain't hating, but I mean, he's still fishing though. But this person's playing deck out, so so she's trying to just end my life with deck out. But it doesn't matter. I got the destruct trying. I'm about to pay pay the life to pop the back row. You know I'm gonna pay all the way down to a thousand. Bang, blow that shit up too. Change my boys to attack and get over there for to get those guts, guts, mm -hmm. guts, mm -hmm. guts. Yeah, she gone. <laughs> all right, so. Listen, you got you got still got some more replays for you boys. Um, here's the my from the platinum going up to the platinum two rank up. Um, you guys are gonna love this duel. I, as you already know, I love stomping the shit out of mys. I, I don't I don't really like my I don't like Harpy's hunting ground. I think it's an unfair ability. Harpy's hunting ground and um, parasite infection are the two most unfair abilities. In this game, every other ability is okay, you know, but Harpy's Hunting Ground Parasite Infection are just very strong abilities. They're just really strong. All right, so she didn't, I guess she just ends her turn for whatever reason. Um, not expecting me to attack in or anything. I could have summoned Destructron to attack in, but I just didn't because um, he would die at the end. So I set them, of course, and I set the League of Elimination, knowing that she can only summon one beast, and it'd probably be Harpy Lady. I was expecting the Egotist play, so I activated um, Eliminating the League immediately. Um, you know, of course, I had to do that. But the funny thing was, she had, ended up having two Harpy Ladies in hand. So, <laughs> so not only did I get to destroy a Harpy on the field, I destroyed the two Harpies in the hand, fully using the effect of eliminating the league for the first time ever. Felt amazing. But in, a, in, in her hand, she had two Harpies. Well, she basically had three Harpies, a Karibo, and uh, some spell card. I don't remember what the spell card was. But it was something that was irrelevant to, what, <laughs> to this setup. Um, and basically she had three and then what I think is ironic. She had she just drew that egotist, which is hilarious I mean, I know it's egotist or that harpy lady sister one or the other <laughs> but She drew into three harpy ladies and I drew into three destructrons and we see which one Came out victorious. Thank you pokey dragon for you giving me the blessings on this deck pokey dragon is coming through Giving me the pluses I need to take these fools down. Now, here's the final duel against this Mako. Now, this is not a Mako fish deck. This is one of these Mako um, balanced handless combo decks. So, basically, this guy is just playing like the world um, the world qualifier deck um, that you've seen like on Duel Links meta and etc. He's just playing that deck, but instead of playing, um, you know, characters that you normally see playing it he's using mako um because he wants to get wet i guess i don't know <laughs> so he starts out with a empachi of the blaze and sets two in the back row and then i didn't know what this was so i just set my um enemy controller and league so i plan on curbin that beast and then blowing up whatever monster but i had no idea the next monster would be gaia so here's a set and here's gaia and there goes gaia <laughs> immediately and you get swerved now this is where things get sexy because you know what your boy got face down the borg flip the borg activate his effect it's time to pop your entire life get out of here Get out of here. Get out of here. So we just paid 3,000 life because I wanted to clear everything from the back row because these dudes normally do not play anything that, um, I mean, that, I mean, they, they play a really strong cards, but I know that they weren't going to be playing anything except for enemy controller that he could have did something to me, uh, with the Destructron. But he wasn't going to econ for a Destructron, like sack and take control. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to just go take advantage and blow up all this shit. He activates the gate. I sack for the 
overdrive, attack him, and of course he brings back the Impachi to defend his mega worthless life points. Now, as you can see, this is a hopeless situation for him because I've already destroyed his Gaia. He has nothing left for probably three Flash Assailants and whatever, whatever other cards he, he has left. He's done at this point because I have a 2100 attack monster, which is stronger than every monster left in his entire worthless deck. And but then I have this on top of it, the Borg. And then after the Borg powers up, I still got Murmurs of the Forest to whisper down whatever beast he summons next. So take your two Gs. And here comes that 21, but he has an Econ, which is fine because, you know, you're top decking, you're only prolonging the inevitable. There's nothing you can draw. And I'll have to take you down. I opened up the research lab get so I can get my funding and attack them guts directly. He's out of here. So, as you can see, boys, this deck is really coming around. And I really, really enjoy playing it. Um, I want to ask you guys a favor. I know you boys love to watch me do these dank duels. And I know you guys are really loving the deck build. And I, I can see it from your comments. Um... Let me know what deck you want to see next. It's really easy to do that because um, I use I used to say just just say hashtag make this and put and and put it down in the comments. But you don't even have to do all that. If you go down to the comment section and you just type in the name of one card, you don't have to type in a whole deck or whatever. Just type in the name of one card and then. I'll make a deck around that card because this is how I build decks. I just go in into my box or whatever and I pick a card. Let's just say it was this card, right? You know, I read the effect. I understand what it does and how it works, its strengths and weaknesses. And then I build a deck that accommodates this card. So that's how I build decks in general. I just pick one card and build a deck around it like I picked Overdrive and build a deck around him. Um, and it became a, of a field and deck control type of deck. So you can let me know what you want to see in the next episode of Dank Links and put that down in the comments. And your boy has to go off to work today. So I hope you guys have a good and, and amazing day. And as always, keep it Dank.